All right, we've got ourselves a constructive response problem. In a science experiment, a scientist records the wavelengths of six waves. The wavelengths in nanometers are listed below. Boom, 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 boom. Which two wavelengths are equal to one another? Whenever I have to deal with different forms of numbers, I like to view them all in terms of decimals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you, 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 and you into a decimal. So I have five one hundreds, right? And I literally am going to write that out as five one hundreds. So this is the tenths. This is the hundreds. Five one hundreds looks like that right there. Okay. Next guy, 10 to the negative third can also be written as 1 over 10 to the third, which is 1 over 10 times 10, 100 times 10, 1,000. So I have 1 one thousandths. Okay, so 1 tenth, hundredth, 1 one thousandths look like that, looks like that, 0.001. All right, you're already a decimal. I'm not gonna change you. I'm not gonna write you off to the side because you're one one thousandth. Oh, how about that? 0 0.001. And you are written in scientific notation. So I will just say, okay, well, here's two. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna pretend that there's a decimal right there. 10 to the negative second means I'm gonna move to the left one, two times. Put a zero there and fill in that space with the zero. So I have 0 0.02. So my two guys that are exactly the same are you, green, and you, blue. When I write them out, I'm going to write them out in their original form. So 10 to the negative third and 1 one thousandth. Like that. Okay, uh, don't have to show any work, don't have to do anything, just answer the problem, donezo. Part B, which wavelength is the shortest? So let me go back to my original. The shortest is going to have the smallest number. So it looks like it's gonna be that guy right there. Um, that's one ten thousandth. So definitely not you, definitely not you. You have a one attached to everything. So that's how they're gonna try to trick you. That's actually the largest. So it's gonna be one, uh, 10 thousandth, so 0 0.0001, so let me go back here. Uh, apparently an angel got its wings. 0 0.0001, yeah, there you are. I copied and pasted it, so I'm in good shape. No work to show, it gave me all that space for nothing. All right. To find the speed of a wave, the scientist uses the formula shown below. Speed equals wavelength times frequency. The wave with wavelength x to the negative third nanometers has a frequency of 10 to the x. The speed of the wave is 10 to the y, where y is greater than three. Write an inequality in terms of y, I'm sorry, in terms of x to represent all possible values of x, all right? So let's see what we have to do here. Speed, speed, speed is 10 to the Y. Wavelength. Uh, wavelength is, gives it to us the wave of the, uh, the wave with the wavelength, um, 10 to the negative third. So equals 10 to the negative third times frequency, which is 10 to the X. All right, clearly they don't want this. They don't want it to look like this. And I notice that everything has a base of 10. So I'm gonna write out one more step. 10 to the Y equals, when you multiply two things with the same base, you add the exponents. So what I have is 10 to the negative three plus X or X to the negative third. There's a rule. That says if you have 10 to the stuff equals 10 to something else, that stuff equals that something else. So that leaves me with y equals x minus 3. 
Now, y has to be greater than three. So this guy is y. This guy, x minus three, has to be greater than three. I can add three to both sides. And that gives me a final inequality of x has to be greater than six. That was pretty brutal, pretty rough, not a fan. And the best part about this whole thing is, is that's part C. We've got one more to go. The wavelength of a seventh wave is recorded. The wavelength is greater than two to the, or two times 10 to the negative second and less than five one hundredths of a nanometer. Okay, write a possible wavelength in nanometers for the seventh wavelength. Write the possible wavelength as a fraction with the denominator 100. All right, so I, I want things with a denominator of 100, so I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to keep you the way you are. Now, 2 times 10 to the negative second can be written as 2 times 1 over 10 to the second. Okay, which is the same as... 2 over 10 to the second, which is 100. So I need something in between that number and that number with a denominator of 100. So that gives me two options. That gives me either 3 over 100, or that gives me an option of 4 over 100. Now, what I'm not going to use, and maybe they'd accept this, I honestly don't know, but what I'm not gonna use is I'm not gonna use that one because that simplifies to one over 25. I'm gonna go with this one as a possible wavelength because that is in between two one hundredths and five one hundredths, has a denominator of 100, does not simplify and follows all of these requirements. Okay? So, gross, but fun.